Welcome. Do join Centenary Bank as we celebrate the opening of our new headquarters at Mapera House and over two decades in the banking industry. Uganda is known as one of the most entrepreneurial countries in the world and with everyone starting up a new business venture, there was a need for financial institutions that supported this. But commercial banks were only providing loans to those who could provide a form of security, like land titles and property, or regular incomes to effect the required installments. What was to happen to those who were considered uncreditworthy? Centenary Rural Development Bank, formerly Centenary Rural Development Trust Limited, is a brainchild of the Catholic laity in Uganda established in 1983. The trust received official recognition from Dr. Milton Obote's government in 1985. The idea of setting up a financial institution to help the poor was not an uncommon idea. The Uganda Catholic Church had had one in place since the 1950s. The idea of setting up a bank was first of all thought about by the Archbishop Joseph Nakabari Kiwanuka the first African bishop who first had a vision of establishing a Catholic-founded financial institution. He was very much concerned with the poor states of the majority of the people he was leading. Because of the con that concern about poverty, Archbishop Chiwanuka assisted the people of Masaka to set up a savings and a credit institution known as Boavu Mpologoma. And through Boavu Mpologoma, Archbishop Chiwanuka hoped that poverty would be eliminated, that the standard of living would be improved, and the individuals would be organized into small societies, and then be able to acquire financial assistance and advice that will enable them to improve their well-being. However, due to lack of professionals and mismanagement of funds, Bavum Porogoma had it to collapse after 20 years. By the time Archbishop Chonuka died on 22nd February 1990, 1966, uh, a Catholic funded institution had not been established. However, there were a number of people who worked with the Archbishop Kiwanuka sharing the same vision. And this included the late uh, Emmanuel Cardinal Sobuga, Monsignor Emmanuel Kibirige, Mr. Joseph Mubiru, the first governor of Bank of Uganda, Professor Charwazi, Reverend Father Kigundu, and Mr. Loris Sebaru. May their souls rest in eternal peace. Then there was another group led by the Francis Play which was also eager to set up the financial institution. And so in 1983, Centenary Bank was registered by the Uganda National Apostolate as a great trust. And the original subscribers were Mr. Simon Rutakome, Mr. Francis Play, Mr. John Ogutu, Mr. Emmanuel Impande, Mr. Paul Katerega, and Mr. Vincent Chilawicha Maria. So Centenary Bank, began its operations in 1985 with the main objective of serving the rural poor and contributing to the overall economic development of the country. Our vision was to, to, to set up a financial organization. And our vision, first of all, was to mobilize funds. You see, before that, uh, Many people, especially in the church, they thought uh, we, could, we could only depend on donor funds to help us develop. But we thought uh, we should mobilize our people uh, to, to collect the funds so that we could set up an organization. So we had to go various uh, stations of, of the church to, to talk to our, our fellow Christians to mobilize funds so that uh, we could set up an, uh, an organization. And uh, our vision was that 
after those funds are, are mobilized, that they are put in, in, in this institution, such funds could be utilized to, 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 uh, to be advanced to the people so that they could set up income generating projects within their own localities or individual enterprises. Uh, the values uh, we were aiming at is, uh, first of all, to develop a, a person both spiritually and economically. And first of all, to, to make sure that uh, our people uh, get uh, quite facilities at uh, at a so, sort of a generous sort of a, like a interest. Because the, at that time, uh, many of our banks were, were foreign. And of course, uh, foreign banks, uh, an ordinary person was finding it difficult to, to approach foreign banks. Uh, but with a, a local organization of this nature, our value was that uh, our people should be treated uh, in the way uh, they, they are. First of all, they were not economically well off to approach the, the foreign banks. So we, we thought uh, an institution of this nature could lend out to, uh, money to, to, to our people at generous uh, terms, like a rate of interest and uh, uh, recovery periods and, and such things. And first of all, also, we wanted uh, an institution uh, where people could get money without very many strangers attached. Uh, at that time, uh, there was a problem in some of our banks. Somebody goes to a bank to, to get money, but somebody is asked to first put this and that and that. We, we thought an institution of this nature should not ask so many things to, to a person before he, he's helped it to, 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 with credit facilities. Because uh, you got a bank, somebody uh, ask you, can you uh, if I say a person wants five million, and uh, a bank official asked if, uh, say, you may ask if, say, one million would be mine. <laughs> Those things were common, in fact. <laughs> so we thought uh, we, could not, we should not encourage such things in a situation of this nature. And in fact, such things uh, were sending away many people from approaching banks. They thought bank banks were not approachable. And also, uh, we, we thought of setting up an institution where uh, foods should be minimized. Because uh, this uh, an institution like a bank. Uh, fraud is a problem. You can find somebody. You go to a bank. You go there tomorrow. You find uh, somebody forged your signature and the uh, money has disappeared from the account. So we wanted to set up an institution with the high values where many fraud should be minimized. So those are our values we are looking for, and also to have people. Who, who could be trusted with the funds. Mm. Our mission is to provide appropriate financial services, especially microfinance, to all people in Uganda, particularly in the rural areas, in a sustainable manner and in accordance with the Uganda law. Our strategy is to serve the economically disadvantaged people, especially in the rural areas and to contribute to the overall economic development of the country. The Christian faith was introduced in, to Uganda in 1877 by the Anglican missionaries. Two years later, in 1979, the Catholic missionaries arrived. Therefore, in 1979, we celebrated our first centenary of faith, a hundred years 
of faith. And uh, in the preparations for that celebration, many ideas came up. For example, the late Cardinal Emmanuel Subuga decided to open a home for disabled people and the old people in a commemoration of what the missionaries were doing. And that's why we have Narukorongo. He also decided to start a religious community of nuns to take care of the sick in a commemoration of the missionaries' arrival in Uganda. So to, to remember the hundred years of our faith, many ideas came up as to what we can do, that even future generations can know that when the church was celebrating, the first centenary of this took place. We had uh, Monsignor Emmanuel Chibiriga. He was also uh, working at the Catholic Secretariat. In fact, he was the director of, of the Social Economic Development Commission. So we worked uh, closely with him. In fact, he, he gave us a lot of encouragement. And also, I remember at that time, uh, His Eminence, uh, at that time, was Bishop of Mitano. Emmanuel Wamala, he also gave us an encouragement. So all those are, in fact, were working, uh, of course, uh, for on, behalf, on behalf of the church. So those are the, the, the key church leaders whom I remember, with whom we, we worked closed in setting up the institution. Now, the late Catholic late of this country also ask themselves the question, what should we do as lay people to, for the, the, to benefit our people, but at the same time to commemorate uh, this centenary? So they came up with the idea of a financial institution with that name of Centenary with the purpose of helping the poor people of our country to help lift the level of our life. So the, that is, I think, the background of the name Centenary uh, Bank. The actual implementation of this idea was 1983, and the bank took off fully in 1985. Then 1993, it became fully commercial bank. So I am um, Archbishop Dr. Cyprian Kisolwanka, the Archbishop of Kampala. I'm also the president of Kaitas Uganda. The commission which belongs to the Catholic Church and which started Centenary Bank way back in 1983 under the chairmanship of Archbishop James Odongo, by then he was the president uh, of Caritas Uganda. There was a Catholic layman here who was working in Diamond Trust. His name was Francis Pule. He had brought this idea to the bishops earlier, but the bishops did not take it up for obvious reasons that bishops are not bankers. But when the lay people themselves who know about the finances and financial management came up with the idea in 79, discussion started. So they had their organization within the Catholic Secretariat under the office of uh, UNCULA, Uganda National Catholic Lay Association. This uh, organization took up the idea officially and they set up committees 
to study the possibilities and uh, how we could proceed. We started this, uh, this uh, project uh, as about setting up uh, a feasibility study team around the year 1981. First of all, we had to choose a right name for, for the project and also start the water legal setup that project will take. You see in, in projects there are several types of organizations, some are private companies, other private internal companies, there are cooperatives, there are non governmental organizations, but we are to study what type of project we should set up. We were several persons involved, but I was the, the chairman of, of the feasibility study team. So we thought uh, since uh, the church encourages uh, setting up uh, economic projects, we as the light people in our various fields, we thought we could set up a, a financial institution to help in the development of our people, especially in the economic and social fields. Because uh, uh, you cannot uh, have a healthy person when he's poor. You may teach a person religion, but when he economically is not well off, <laughs> the religion also may not uh, go deep in that person. My first association was actually before it started in 1982. And uh, if I may tell you why I said before it started, uh, the um, uh, people who thought of it, I believe you have seen Mr. Takome, and we have told you when they started, um, they had papers. Uh, based on the ideas were based on what the, the contents of the Bible <laughs> and uh, they produced them and took them to um, let uh, Cardinal Suga and uh, the Cardinal wanted to hear from me whether this thing was uh, something worth talking about was it feasible? Was it useful? And so on. I looked at the papers. I said, yes, it's something that anybody can think of and can start. So if they want to start, I don't know whether they want the church to start it or whether they do it themselves and why they came to you, I don't know. But it's something worth starting. And he said, no, no, no the church is not... Uh, interested in that. But he said, well, I don't even know why they also came to see me. I said, well, obviously, they want your support, they, this church, uh, to support them. So we both agreed, they parted, and so And as far as I'm concerned, that was what the more, <laughs> that, that there wouldn't be anything more. Um, so in uh, uh, the year after, in 83, I think, that's when they started operation. Uh, they started. It was uh, the first thing I saw was an office um, being run by a, a man called Onyango. I'm not quite sure whether he's still alive. Um, he's, he was a very nice fellow. We were friends somehow. And um, I all of a sudden saw him in an office. In an office. And I said, what's happening? <laughs> And he talked to me about it again. <laughs> I said, oh, that's wonderful. I'm a member of the Uganda Episcopal Conference naturally, and uh, my relationship with the bank comes from that position of being a member of the Uganda Episcopal Conference. And also, the Uganda Episcopal Conference asked me to be one of the bishops together with Archbishop Cyprian Rwanga to represent the 
to represent them on the board of directors of Centenary Bank. If our people get access to credit, they can also be able to uplift the rural areas so that what people are looking for in the cities can be found in the rural areas. Some of us who come up from a rural background, mind you, our parents used to come to Buganda here, Kupakasa, to work for money, because money was only in the city. And that tendency has not yet completely gone out. But we are convinced that given goodwill, given commitment, given that sense of vocation to uplift the people from the rural areas, it is possible to uplift the rural areas so that the good things we look for in the city can also be found in the villages, and it would be nice. The, the bank belongs to the Catholic Church, so all the bishops were involved in the establishment of this bank. But since not all bishops would be able to go to government to do all the preparatory works, they had some bishops who were in charge of key departments at the Catholic Secretariat. And one such bishop was key in those days was Archbishop James Odongo. He's now an emeritus of uh, Tororo. Those days was simply uh, Bishop Odongo, James Odongo. He is the one who was in charge of social services that we call today Caritas. Uh, he is the one who took the initiative to go to the president. But I know other bishops were involved. Uh, bishop Sentongo was not a bishop by that time. Sentongo was the secretary general, so he was also involved in the operation. I know Cardinal Wamala was also involved in the operations because he too was a member of the Episcopal Conference and he had some responsibility to do. And I could go on enumerating all the names of all the bishops, but you don't have all the time. But all bishops are involved and there is no one bishop who can say, it's my baby, I'm the one who did it. They all did it like a team, a corporate activity, a baby of the conference. And these individual bishops who are playing a, a leading role were merely doing so in the name of the bishops. Now, there was the executive secretary for social services, uh, Monsignor Emmanuel Kibirige. He was also involved in the sense that he was in charge of the department. So it was up to him to steer the cause, the movement, and so forth of the, the, the department, of a, rather the founding of the bank. He was very much keenly involved in it. But all bishops were. I may even say Cardinal uh, Emmanuel Wamala was also involved. Uh, Cardinal Nzubuga was also involved because Monsignor Kibirige was a priest from his diocese, and the cardinal saw the good of this bank, the intended bank, and they were ready to release personnel to work and to see to the beginnings of the bank. At that time, I was the Secretary General of the Uganda Episcopal Conference. So I was at the heart of the project. And in fact, Pope Paul VI, that's the Pope who visited Uganda in 1969, the first pope to visit Africa, in one of his messages to the church and people of goodwill, stated that development is the new name for evangelization. So a care for the total person, care for the total person. And we must recall that before the Centenary Bank, the church had founded unions, had founded unions in the 50s, in the 50s, in the Diocese of Masaka, Buavu Mporogoma Union was founded. That's 30 years before Centenary Bank. And in the 60s, in Kampala Diocese, teachers created union and a Yeterekera society were also founded. 
this somehow prepare the way for Centenary Bank. People had already got that idea of pulling together for economic purposes. So the beginning was stiff in as far as it was a job to convince people to dream of a bank when they saw past the failures. But with the determination and capability of Monsignor Kibirige, with our assistance of the team then, we managed to make sure the bank started. And so we had to dispel the fears of those who say, if I put my money there, when shall I get it? How soon shall I reap the dividends? What about the interest? All those fears were there now that had to be overcome with the shared determination and knowledge. But above all, the fear of failure and loss of money. That was what we overcame in the beginning by starting strict accountability and sincerity, which convinced the people eventually to come to the bank. And in that way, obstacles were removed and the bank started steadily till it actually reached the level of independence as we are rejoicing with today. Centenary Bank was a result of the combined effort of the Catholic laity and the Catholic Church in Uganda, but help did come from other partners. Dr. Geiger, former president German Savings Bank Foundation, Dr. Wind, managing director, Rubber Bank Holland, GTZ in Germany, SIDI, an investment company in France. After nearly 30 years in existence, Centenary Bank has weathered many storms, but has managed to secure itself a niche in the market, the rural poor, and the task of educating and helping them to improve on their finances. The strategy of the bank has changed over the years, and this too is evident in the growth of its network, from one to 52 branches across the country. When we finally got registered as a full service commercial bank in 1993, then the need to expand our branch network became much more critical. Of course, we started small, dealing with clientele that had not been previously banked, uh, what would normally be called microfi microfinance uh, clients. And uh, our focus from the beginning was to try and extend our presence to the rural areas so that we could uh, serve the rural community, the farming community. Uh, generally, the kind of community that would otherwise find it difficult to get service loans and other banking services from uh, what were then the regular commercial banks, commercial banks which needed serious security, commercial banks which needed uh, uh, serious and uh, fairly established record of uh, earning and, uh, and uh, performance and uh, we needed, the idea was to set up services that would uh, bring more of our people into the banking sector. People feel comfortable to save the little money they have, uh, would learn how to uh, operate bank accounts would uh, eventually learn how to borrow and use borrowings wisely uh, in order for them to expand their small businesses and grow. Over the last 25, over 25 years uh, that the bank has been operating, uh, we've been able to put up now 50 branches, uh, 50 service points spread all over the country all the way from Koboko to Kabale uh, to Kitigum, Gulu, Kanungu, 
of course the central region we have a number of them and we are planning to do more because uh, the idea is to serve as many ordinary Ugandans as possible. Centenary Bank occupies a unique position in the financial system in Uganda. It has been registered as a full-service commercial bank, but its target market is clearly the microfinance sector, with deposits as low as 10,000 shillings and loans as small as 100,000 shillings. For close to 30 years, Centenary Bank established itself as a successful local bank that the people of Uganda could rely on and grow with. Well, Centenary Bank has been positioned as a bank for the ordinary Ugandans, uh, serving uh, many people, especially those in the peri-urban and rural areas. Of course, it operates in the urban areas as well. Uh, and because of that uh, and uh, the, ne the, the quality of service, a number of people have patronized it. And in the process, uh, it has been inevitable that we have to put up many service points across the country. Currently, we have uh, over 1.2 million bank accounts or depositors. Uh, we are giving loans to over 120,000 uh, Ugandans and uh, hoping to do more. Uh, we are owning a market share of close to 10% as far as volumes of loans, volumes of deposits are concerned. But as far as the number of clients uh, is concerned, we, we have uh, over a third of the banking public in Uganda. Therefore, the impact has been great. Uh, and uh, we do thank the clients, the whole banking public that has uh, patronized uh, our bank, their bank. And our pledge, of course, always has been to offer much more in terms of better quality service. Our vision is to be the best provider of financial services, especially microfinance in Uganda. Our vision and mission have not changed. That is still our vision and mission. As we grow, we, we, we work differently. We become more experienced in the banking uh, sector. Uh, we, we need, to, in order to serve those people, uh, in order to be true to our mission, we need to also understand the nature of the financial sector. There have been many changes, as you've heard over the years, about, and we've got to adjust effectively so that we, we survive, first of all, and stay around and make money and, and be able to modernize and therefore fulfill our mission of serving the people of Uganda. I'm called Dibiengwenyema Eligias. I am a simple peasant farmer. And uh, mostly I am a quote bailiff. I've been with Central Bank maybe since it started. Uh, it was around 1982 uh, when a church sub-parish, number 11 of Christ the King Church, around Kamocha, we were told that the Catholic community uh, is starting a bank. And we were told that if you want to join, you can buy some shares. So you become also a bank owner. I and my wife, Clemencia Bingwenyuma, who is not here, said, oh, we cannot miss this. We went to the premises by then. They were on... They were on Nasa Nkrumah Road, around 1982. We opened up a savings account, me and my wife. From that time up to today, we are still stuck with Semere Bank. No, we, are still, we are still stuck with Semere Bank for a few reasons. One, the interest rate is not all that high. It is, it is reasonable. And uh, when they brought uh, ATM services, their rates are quite uh, low, they are not as high as other banks. And uh, 
Yeah, at one time we tried to uh, get a loan from the bank. It was not all that uh, troublesome. We got it easily and paid back easily. I think uh, basically that, that is the, the case. We are still with them. And uh, their services are not all that bad, although you can find some uh, a chew. If you bear with them, you can get served and go. So that's why I was still stuck, I was stuck with them. I've been in the bank since 1990. I remember it was 15th of January 1990 that I was employed in Centenary Bank. I've moved in different places of the bank. I joined as a banking assistant and later I kept on raising until I've reached the level of a senior banking manager. I've moved in different branches Central, say you could say Kampala branches, Mitiana, Northern part, Eastern, and as of now, I'm the manager of Kono branch. Centenary Bank has had a number of development partners from the donor community who have contributed to its growth and expansion. The Austrian Regional Bureau, the British Council, DFID, CGAP, CRS, Danida, MicroSave Africa, the European Development Fund, FMO, UNCDF, USAID, and AFD. With the merging of microfinance and commercial banking, Centenary Bank has grown quite large. So large, in fact, that there was a need to construct larger headquarters that would suit the bank's prestige and indicate its growth. The final location for Mapera House is on a busy street right in the center of the commercial business district in Kampala. In fact, I think I can mention that uh, uh, the initial suggestion for giving that building the name Mapera came from His Eminence. Emmanuel Cardinal Mamala. He made a simple suggestion, as is his usual way, humble suggestion, proposed it to members of the board, to his colleagues, and members of the board considered it, and they thought it was a very appropriate name, and they adopted it and became the name of Mapera House. Now, the biggest challenge that our bank has been facing is space. The lack of space main at times lead to inefficiency. And indeed, we have been inefficient in some aspects. Today, I'm happy to report that we have come, overcome this challenge by constructing Mapera House. Apart from creating space, we wanted to have our own headquarters and enhance the brand of Centenary Bank. A bank, in conclusion, I would say it will continue to explore ways to serve its rural customers in a better and more efficient manner. And we also continue to strive to reinforce its number one position in rural banking. Mapeda House will definitely assist us in fulfilling our vision, which is to be the best provider of financial services, especially microfinance in Uganda. To my knowledge, Mapera House, when we are done, will probably cost uh, something in the neighborhood of $40 million. It has been financed from earnings that have been retained by the bank after uh, paying dividends to the shareholders as uh, the board has determined and recommended the annual general meeting. So after paying some dividends, so it, what it means basically is that the profits we have been making over the years, some of them, the board has decided and annual general meeting has agreed, should be given back to shareholders as dividends. Some of those profits should be retained. That's what I mean by retained earnings. And, out, and, and they, when they are retained as earnings, they, they form part of the equity of the bank. The point, the important point though is that it has been entirely financed from retained earnings. 
not from debt. There is not a single shilling that has been borrowed for the construction of Mapera House. Well, Mapera House was conceived definitely by the bank management, the board, then invited us as a consultant, they appointed us. And then we did some sketches which were approved and from onwards we did the detailed designs, tenders and then construction. It has taken four, four years, from uh, September 2007 up to the present. This is because originally it, they, we were designed in two, two phases. So the bank went in for first phase, then at a later stage, uh, after one year, they said they would go with the second phase. Then that also increased the period. Over time, there has been some changes in the building. Then this has, has, has caused the, the extension, the various extensions. And we are hoping by the end of March it should be completed. Uh, the office space will be about 17,000 17, square meters. And then uh, about, about 16 car parking in the basements. So overall the building is about 27,000 square meters. There are 19 levels on the building. We have three levels of uh, basements. That is mainly for car parking and the services like transformers, generators, uh, water storage tanks and the like. So there are about 100 car parking spaces in the three basements. Then we have four, four, uh, four levels of podium, that is the, the long part of the building, and that is offices. We have, uh, we have banking hall, beautiful banking hall on the ground floor, and then offices for staff on the first, second, and third. Then on the fourth, we have uh, a staff canteen, and then the rest is uh, the office tower, of about 12 stories, and that one will be complete in the second phase. Well, of course, to the staff, uh, we've said uh, this is the time to even put in more effort. We've already put in effort. But uh, at this level, with all the accomplishments that the bank has had, the new building, the head office that we are going to begin occupying, uh, the new infrastructure, the increase in branch network, uh, the facilitation that the bank is giving, doing for us, it is us now to continue, you know, taking this bank to another level. Of course, to our clients, first of all, we thank them uh, for the custom, for the loyalty, for the business they've been doing with us. Uh, we pledge to them that uh, with the new things that this bank has put in place, with the new head office that we have, it is actually your building. With the many branches that the bank is putting up, with the many innovations that the bank is coming up with, we are now ready than ever before to serve you. I would like to thank the original founders, the shareholders, my colleagues at the board, top management, and the entire staff of Centenary Bank for the job well done. I cannot forget Bank of Uganda for the support, advice that it has been giving to us. Last and most important, I would like to thank the government of Uganda for the conducive environment that has been accorded to us to enable us operate in this country. I thank you. So um, when we get to near to opening uh, a new project, a new development of Centenary Bank, our thoughts go out to those founders. Our thoughts go out to all the people who have supported us and we can only hope that our humble service to them has helped to realize their dreams.
So here's to Centenary Bank. Congratulations on your new establishment and we all wish you many more years of success in the business.